Week one of the NFL season is finally here. You do not want to miss today's show. A ton of big news updates, our Super Bowl picks. Make sure you subscribe. Hey, this is Al Robinson, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Tuesday, September 8th. The show the show is a little bit delayed this morning. Is it? Because there may have been a mustache hair in Mike's <laughs> coffee mug. To be fair. We don't know for sure. We're running forensics on it right now. <laughs> It could have been an eyebrow. It could have been a beard, a mustache. Could and we don't know mine? if it's yours. I, yeah, we don't know. That's One why of the producers. I'm, I'm getting to the bottom of this. If it was yours, would you have uh, drank it down? That is an excellent question. Like if you could confirm. Forensics were here. We, we just got it back. It you was yours. You watched it fall from your face to the mug. Yeah. Yeah. And then drift to the absolute bottom right. of the cup. Right. right. We noticed Mike was looking at the bottom of his <laughs> cup too often. We're like, we can't start the show. Is it if weird he's be obsessed that with I'm this. saying no? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that you wouldn't drink it? Yeah. I mean, I don't no, think any of us weird. have to drink mustache hair. But it's just weird. My mustache is in my mouth all the time. <laughs> like, if, you, if you're out there and you've had a mustache... <laughs> You've licked yeah. your mustache. But right. is your mustache in your belly? Right. <laughs> That's like, the difference. All of a sudden, it detaches from my face, and I and I shun it. This right. is this is. I do not claim you used ownership. Used to be a part of me. <laughs> no more. Oh my goodness. So, but we we pressed on. We uh, we had uh, Al Borland take care of that problem for you. Yes, he saved me from myself. And here we are in week one of the National Football League season. Un. Believable. I don't know how we got here. I, Much like the mustache here at the bottom of the mug. I don't know how it got there. I don't know how we got here. And we'll never know. We're so close. It's it's happening. It's this week. We're yes. talking week yeah. one football. Yeah, it's great. And we have so much to talk about today. Hope everybody had a uh, safe, healthy, happy, wonderful Labor Day. Uh, we took that time for a final breather before the season. And... Uh, here we are. We're we're stoked. We're excited. The Megla Bowl, today's the final draft day for that. So people have been drafting. Uh, that's been really exciting. We did surpass last year's total amount of Megla Bowl, Megla Bowl entrance. Which means it is officially the largest fantasy football <laughs> league of all time. You mean because it surpassed last year's? Which was the largest okay. fantasy football league of all time. We have yet to be corrected. On Which that means front. it is the yeah. largest fantasy <laughs> football league of all uh, time. Uh, if you're just joining us for the season, welcome in to the show. The fantasy footballers, Andy, Mike, and Jason at the FF Ballers. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can follow Jason at Jason FFL, Mike at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. The website, which now has the week one rankings and the start sit tool, thefantasyfootballers.com and the community of nearly 13,000 strong at jointhefoot.com. So we have a lot of news and notes to get into today. Everything from extensions to roster cuts, um, some signings. But I thought it would be fun. We're right here on the precipice of the 2020 season to do some predictions. So let's... Predict? Let's, let's do some predictions. <laughs> the Super Bowl... What do you got, Mike? I am going with a bounce back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I have them making it in. The defense was nice. elite enough to almost take them single-handedly to the playoffs last year. And with Big Ben back and the weapons around him, I got the Steelers making it. I also have the Saints uh, representing the NFC. I think that they're the team remains solid over there. And I'm taking... The Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, yes. To win a Super Bowl. And uh, which Super Bowl are we on here, fellas? Uh, geez, let me think. Do some math. Oh, yes. I love, I love that pick. I, I think that the Steelers, and really, if you look at Vegas odds, 
Vegas is expecting big things for the Steelers this year outside of those top, you know, teams that are perennially there uh, over the last couple of years with the greatest quarterbacks, the Lamar Jacksons and Pat Mahomes. The Steelers are in that mix. I really like bringing that up. I like your pick more than mine because <laughs> it's more fun. Mine is super chalk, but the truth is I wanted to do what I believed and I think in this COVID season, those teams with continuity, the teams returning the same offense, the same defense for the most part, have a leg up. And I've got the Ravens versus the Saints as mm. well from the NFC. And I've got Lamar Jackson winning his first Super Bowl at Super Bowl 55. 55! Oh! Try to get it in there again, huh? Well, we'll just see how you do. All right, I did not go chalk. I am sticking with my early off-season Super Bowl pick, uh, which is the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> oh, yeah. I am going to stick with them. I don't know if uh, one of the extensions that we, we wouldn't have talked about today because it's on the defensive side of the ball. They extended Tredavious White. If you saw the video of Tredavious White, I retweeted it. Uh, incredible player, incredible video. Uh, I love the Bills. You talk about continuity with uh, their head coach, uh, Sean McDermott, Josh Allen making the next step, and that defense being so foundational. Um, I think Buffalo can get over the hump this year, so I'm going to take the non-chalk, bolder prediction. I'm taking the Buffalo Bills, and I'm taking them over, and this is the change. I'm going to take them over Tampa Bay. That feels like maybe the popular NFC pick of the moment, but I believe it. And the reason is not because of a super team narrative with Tom Brady and bringing in Gronk, but because they were an ascending team regardless, and Bruce Arians right. is a really good head coach. Bruce Arians led the Arizona Cardinals with Carson Palmer to a 13-3 and season. Um, he's, a, he's been a great coach everywhere he's gone. I believe that he has the personnel to get them over the hump, so I'm going to take the Bills over the Bucks in Super Bowl. <laughs> Thank you. So M NFL MVP picks. All right. You want to do those? Yep. I got Drew Brees. I got the Saints making it, and I got Brees being the one uh, carrying him there. I'm going to go Mahomes. He's the best. Boo. Yeah, you boo Boring. all you want. And at the end of the year, when Mahomes is actually the MVP, you would be like, boo, you got it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but but then other people will have gotten it right, too. So you'll just be one of them. Yeah. The others. Enjoy splitting your jackpot. I will enjoy that more <laughs> than having no jackpot. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I'm going to give it to Josh Allen. Uh, obviously, I have the Bills winning the Super Bowl, having a great season. Josh Allen, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with him. Yeah, I'd we, love to have said Kyler and the Cardinals win the Super Bowl. That would have been cool, but yeah, that would be it. Would be, be pretty. That cool. would be awesome. A ain't happening. Uh, you know, speaking of the Buffalo Bills and continuity, I don't know if you are aware they are the number one team in continuity ranking done by uh, snap percentage from last year they are returning 88 mm. percent of their snaps 94 interesting uh percent on the offensive side of the yeah. ball so they have extreme continuity when you talk about offensive line defensive line it, it, the whole team it's i great. love everything they're doing i mean bringing in zach moss huge for that team with what they needed and then picking up stefan diggs to accentuate you know what josh allen help josh allen with the deep ball and then continuity across the board. So um, obviously, I knew that statistic. Obviously. All right, last one. Offensive rookie of the year. We it's hard for a quarterback not to win this. So right. we all think Joe Burrow will win it. So I guess we're saying runner up. Sure. Uh, Offensive rookie of the year, runner up. And it, it, it's also tough for a rookie wide receiver to come in and take it. So I'm going to go with a running back. And come on, you know I'm going with Antonio Gibson. Well, he's both. So perfect. Oh man, yeah. There, there you go. I, I think that if it's a running back, which I, you know, if it's not Joe Burrow, it will probably be a running back. It's going to be Jonathan Taylor, who means far more to the Colts. If if he gets the opportunity, and the Colts are a really good team, they could win this division. They could get in the playoffs. If that happens, it will not be Philip Rivers. That's that's really the reason. I think it'll be Jonathan Taylor. Well, and I'll go with one that isn't if he gets the opportunity, one that already has it. Clyde Edwards Alaire, Kansas City, that offense Boo. from day one. <laughs> so it's a chalk. <laughs> News and notes from around the league. Al, can we get uh, a mustache hair into Jason's mug? 
Probably. All I'll right. work on it through the show. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have an almond, so we can go mustache hair. All right. Deshaun Watson got paid. Whew. Not a 10 year deal, though, but he got a four year, $160 million extension. Um, good for him. Great player. Outstanding player. We get to see him Thursday. It's the second highest, uh, you know, contract of all times between behind Pat Mahomes, and it's $160 million, which <laughs> just makes, when I saw that, I'm like, wow. That's the second highest, $160 million. And Mahomes got $500 million contract. That's just like, that well, is. And the, the big thing to me, the, the takeaway, one, yeah, you had to lock Watson up. Excellent. Great great work by the Texans. Dak Prescott is sitting just on the side going, you should not have franchised me. Remember it, when they didn't want to pay him $30 million a couple the, years ago? The bill just keeps going up. If you're Dak and you've had a strategy session with your agent and your team and you're like, yeah, let's just let's just kind of hold on and see what happens. And the next thing that happens is a $500 million contract to Patrick Mahomes and a $160 million four-year deal. And what's like the, the really dancing. bizarre, like funny thing about it is, so the, the Cowboys franchised him. I mean, he's making a lot of money this year. The Cowboys want him to do well. The yeah. Cowboys want to win games, yeah. but winning games means that Dak Prescott's contract price just continues to go up. So it's uh, so the better the cow a, right. the better the Cowboys are, the worse the Cowboys are going to be. It's it's quite the quagmire <laughs> going on in Dallas. Uh, Keenan Allen signed a four year extension. Now the second highest paid receiver in the NFL. DeAndre Hopkins close to an extension. Alvin Kamara close to an extension i love it let's go so uh that's that's big i mean the alvin Kamara one i'll bring up this fantasy question for you we know that drew Brees is not going to pl play out whatever this extension is for Kamara. he's not going to be around for uh however long this extension ends up being how do you view him in dynasty formats it's hard enough to value running backs he's obviously a pass catcher Brees could retire after this season sure you know, when, when I'm in a dynasty league and you're going on to that second contract, for almost every running back, I'm hoping to sell high. I'm hoping to get out of them uh, because Kamara still has a, an enormous amount of value. He's, you know, he was my running back four up until a week ago when, the, you know, the epidural news was coming out. He's, he's a phenomenal back. And when you sign an extension – that's when you can capitalize on them in Dynasty. If you could swap him for, you know, I mean, someone might trade Clyde Edwards-Alaire for Alvin Kamara, the, right. the unknown for the known, and I would do that in a heartbeat. Um, so, I, obviously, he's good. I wouldn't be trading him for nothing, but if you can, if you can capitalize, now's the time because, like you said, Andy, if, if the Saints, if, if Drew Brees leaves after this season, which I think is most people's expectation – um, it's mine at least. Then what is that team? Are they is going it Jameis to Winston? Right, and are they going to be good enough with Winston? Probably. And there was a little note. I don't know if you guys had had caught it, but Kamara uh, reiterated the the epidural. He said, oh, "I did this last year too." So yeah, you ho hopefully we don't have to worry about that. All right, the Lions were the lucky winners in the Adrian Peterson sweepstakes, a one year deal with Detroit. Uh, he said, they're giving me the opportunity to play. Uh, I know Matt Patricia is enamored with Adrian Peterson. Uh, so, both Scarborough on injured reserve. DeAndre Swift has been banged up. Carryon Johnson has a perma brace. So, Adrian Peterson could get some run here. He could. In Detroit. Do you care in terms of, like, free agent acquisition, end of draft? I'm not going after Peterson. It... I mean, it could affect how you feel about DeAndre Swift. Yeah, did it move Swift down the board for you guys? I didn't make a move. I already had him kind of, you know, in that like RB2, RB3 area. Swift is the best running back on the team right now. But does that, re <laughs> does that really matter? No. Will that turn into enough opportunity? I've been off of the Detroit backfield entirely Swift. Forever. I've never been on for this for 2020. <laughs> I, I haven't wanted to go in. I mean, we've talked about that, right? Like, who's going to be the first man up? Is it carry on? Is it Swift? It, it probably doesn't matter because they're both going to be involved. Now with Swift's injury, 
I started to, you know, it, we've had a couple drafts that have happened in the last couple of days before the Adrian Peterson news, and it was like, you know, carry on's a value there. He he's he right. could be the the clear starter to start the season that you're getting in late rounds. Now with the AP signing, I'm back. That it was like a week a, a week long blip a little I, little fling where it, well, yes just a little, <laughs> a little twist you know, with my ex you smell some of the perfume from last year exactly but it, you know it 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 basically means i'm off of all three so this was good for you this was necessary adrian peterson signing yeah um deandre swift has been in the udk bus all off season just from the perspective of a shared backfield in detroit and what they're you know when i made the case for matthew stafford as a top 5 fantasy quarterback it was because They've they've entrusted him to be an aggressive, you know, pass first type of offense. Lynn Bowden was uh, traded running running back slash every position because yeah. we we weren't sure what Lynn Bowden was going to be when he was drafted by the Raiders in the third round. What we know now is he will not be a Raider, a Las Vegas <laughs> Raider. So they took their third round pick, tried to convert him to running back, and they said. How about uh, Miami? We'll give you Bowden and a sixth round pick if you give us a fourth round pick for next year. Oops, whoops. Yeah, and I it failed. the The Dolphins are looking at him as a wide receiver. I'd rather be the Cardinals trading Rosen for a second than the Dolphins releasing Rosen. So if it didn't work. There you go. But Lynn Bowden was somebody that people worried about threatening Josh Jacobs mm -hmm. as a pass catcher. And who was that other guy that was brought up 400,000 times in my Twitter mentions? Theoretic. Theoretic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who was cut? He was. So now we have two fewer reasons to troll me, Mike. <laughs> That's always a good feeling. Yeah. So Josh uh, Jacobs has look, every be opportunity. Before this year. you ride off on that high horse, I will remind you that the, the two running backs behind Josh Jacobs are specifically of you will. pass catchers. Yeah, I, I know I know they are, but is theoretic one isn't named, one of them. Is one of them named DeAndre Washington? No. That's right, because he is not on the team anymore. He yes. left. So I, I, I'm, I'm on team Jacobs. Right. I think that the yeah, pass catching work will be there this year. I know. Mike doesn't understand what he started when he began <laughs> trolling me with theoretic and the amount of people that just blitzed me. And I said, <laughs> what did I say to you within five seconds of you telling me he signed? I said, I will bet you anything you want, he's cut. Yes, and I would not take that bet because... Because you knew, <laughs> I and knew you would still be sold me down the river. <laughs> All right. Hey, it's a good day for me. Zach Taylor says AJ Green is full go. He'll be a full go on Sunday. For the first time. Hey, I can't say anything better than that. He's well, going to be a full go on Sunday. Yeah. Will you start him? You drafted A.J. Green. Are you confident to start him week one? He's A.J. Green. He's a full go. Or do you bench him? Andy. Um, I think based on what I've done in mock drafts and where I get A.J. Green, I'm not always in the position to have to start him with the with the price. Right. So I would I if I needed to, yeah. I mean, I guess it's anybody on your roster if you needed to. But um, like if you're asking me Deshaun Jackson or A.J. Green in week one, I probably – Probably play Djax and see how AJ is doing out there. But yeah, I'm, I'm willing to. He's just not very expensive in drafts. Uh, Golden Tate, sidelined. He hasn't practiced since the final week of camp. Has a soft tissue issue. It's not I good. would start Sterling Shepard in week one. I certainly would. I, I looked into Darius Slayton quite a lot this weekend because he was someone I was going to target for our league of record draft, which is the day before kickoff oh that's tomorrow Ooh, that is that's tomorrow. exciting to say and I was looking at Darius Slayton for that draft and the more I looked into it I saw and he got injured uh, like a week ago and I saw nothing on it I, I just, talking just about Slate yes Darius Slayton um and I can't find any follow-up news I saw one person from that area who was a New York uh Giants Twitter account saying that they fear he could miss some time, but I haven't seen this anywhere, anywhere. And so now hearing Golden Tate's hamstring, Sterling Shepard could very well be an awesome Evan piece. Ingram. Yeah, Evan Ingram oh, too. Oh, certainly. Evan Ingram. So, I need to move him up. Uh, that being said, you might want to just watch it play out if you're not confident in uh, the Giants against the Steelers in week one. So uh, oh, that's Steelers defense pretty 
pretty they're, solid. They're pretty good. Uh, we did Mike's get an Super Bowl pick. injury right. update, Devontae Parker. So if you bought the dip on Devontae Parker with some ambiguity around his injury, he did return to practice today. So that's some good news. And we know Ryan Fitzpatrick is starting the season as the starter in Miami. So after all the doubt and fear and all that stuff, you end up with Devontae Parker and Ryan Fitzpatrick in week one. So it is the Patriots. Yeah. Uh, so which yeah, worked out well the it last worked out time. Well they the last time. Yes. Um, what else is going on? We have Debo Samuel. This is big news. This is big news. The, the Debo Samuel uh, off the NFI list. He is not on the short term IR. They they're saying he could play. He is eligible to play. I am not starting Debo Samuel week one, despite the juicy matchup against the Arizona Cardinals. But this is this is fantastic news. If like. I, we were. I've been drafting Debo Samuel in that seventh, eighth round for a player that, if he had never been injured, would have been a third, maybe a fourth round pick. The hype on Debo Samuel was real, and it was warranted. He's an excellent player, so that's that's very uh, exciting stuff for Debo if you were drafting him later. Yeah, there there is so much news from yes. this last weekend. Before we keep going through all of the news, we do want to thank today's sponsors. Thank Lightstream. You don't need to be an expert to know that consolidating credit card debt into one low fixed rate can save you money. Lightstream's fixed rate credit card consolidation loans start at 5.95% APR with auto pay and excellent credit, lower than the average credit card interest rate of 19% APR. You can get a loan from 5000 to 100000 with absolutely no fees. The application is 100% online, and you can even get your money the same day you apply. Lightstream believes that people with good credit deserve a great interest rate and no fees, and that's exactly what they deliver. The Foot Clan can save even more with an additional interest rate. The only way to get it is to go to lightstream.com slash footballers, L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash footballers. It's subject to credit approval. Rate includes 0.5% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash footballers for more information. Foot Clan, we got to thank long-term supporter of this show, Quip. Quip it. You got to quip it and quip it good. That's what I did this morning with with my uh, Quip toothbrush, handled my dental hygiene yeah. situation. You knocked a mustache hair free, but other than that, you that got is it done. Right. Look, you that, got could, it done. that could have happened. Yeah. Uh, but Quip knows that good health starts with good habits, and Quip makes it easy for you to brush and floss better. The Quip electric toothbrush has timed sonic vibrations, 30-second pulses to guide a dentist. Recommended two-minute routine. That's my favorite part about my Quip. It lets me know when it's time to change sections of the mouth. It lets me know when I'm done. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to have any kind of other timer, and it's a great deal. Uh, your your Quip brush head, toothpaste, and floss refills are delivered on the dentist-recommended schedule of every three months for just $5 each, and shipping is free. Join over 3 million happy customers using Quip starting at $25. Bucks. Foot Clan, get in on it. If you go to getquip.com slash footballers right now, you will get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash footballers. Getquip.com slash footballers. Quip, the good habits company. All right, big news. Jalen Rager not placed on IR. That's also very good news. Alshon Jeffrey not placed on PUP. That was surprising to me. I mean, the expectation, for, I mean, wasn't it all of our expectations? It was, Every yes. beat reporter that he would start the season on PUP, which means, I don't know, f how many games? Four? Maybe. I mean, fewer than six, right? Yeah. Is, is at least their hope or their, uh, you know, is probably their expectation, definitely their hope. It's in. Did you guys see the? There was uh, some whispers that they're trying to trade him. You Interesting. See, you no, see I those? did not. I did mm. not see that. Yeah. Good. Unsuccessful. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Damian Harris mm. in, on injured reserve will miss at least the first three weeks of the NFL season for the Patriots. There was a lot of hype around Damian Harris. Right now, just pay attention to this Foot Clan. Put him on your IR. You can you can pick him up after your draft. Throw right. him on your IR spot if you have it in your league. And at least wait and see how that backfield looks. Cause Lamar Miller's been cut. We yeah. have given this tip many times before. I've used it this last week in drafts, but it's using your last positional pick to grab an IR eligible player. I've been grabbing Alshon Jeffrey left and right because he's there with my last pick. And then as soon as your draft is over, you throw him in on, on the IR and pick up a free waiver pickup that you probably could have drafted there anyways. 
All right, Brandon Cooks limited in Monday's practice. We don't know a whole lot more, but they do play Thursday, so pay attention to that if you were going to start him on Thursday. That's a big deal, a quad injury as well. So soft tissue, you can't just say, well, the game's Thursday, we're good. Mm Mm-hmm. Might be time to fly in formation. Ooh, that that flying V. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I've been on the Brandon you could Cook be the side. Gold, you could be the Goldberg in all this. <laughs> I, I assume that's a fat reference. I haven't seen the movie. You've never you've never seen, seen the Mighty I Ducks. Have, I, we, we've. I think I've brought this up before, but it's there's two movies that I'm ashamed. I'm, I'm ash- I've never seen the Mighty Ducks. Yeah, it's Space Jam. And I've never seen Space yeah, Jam. Yeah, you which got is a problem. Like, those seem right up my alley, yeah. my age group, my everything. So you don't know what knuckle puck time is. So I've seen a couple clips. Isn't that like he puts the puck up on the side? and Yeah. Yeah, so I do know that one. Also, uh, as anyone knows, if you saw that movie as a kid, you went home immediately. If you had a hockey stick, you're like, "Oh, I'm gonna check this out." It doesn't. The, the hockey puck doesn't actually do that. No, it doesn't. No, not it doesn't the, fly like a knuckleball. It doesn't perplex your friends, family, and everyone in the area into some sort of no. It just time went, war. It goes. Yeah. <laughs> you just. And how many people went home and broke a window? I want to know the percentage of post Mighty Duck window breaks. That's got to be a lot. It's got to. There's got to be a handful of them. That, that's funny. But if you're new. I definitely you tried that immediately and a lot. Yeah. <laughs> if you're new and you don't understand the flying V reference here, <laughs> it is oh, Will Fuller. Will yes. Fuller oh, thank V. You. Yes. Will Fuller the fifth. I thought he was going to speak as an authority on Mighty Ducks now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Trey Burton's on injured reserve tight end for the Colts. So you get some starts out of Jack Doyle. Jack Doyle. 100% oh, you can. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, is that a start of the week reference? I've, I don't know. Oh I don't know. We'll have to God. wait you and find have, out. Gross. You have all your starts all, of the week. All my starts of the week have been in since last week. Yeah, good Good luck with that. Uh, Travis Kelsey was limited in Monday's practice. Something to pay attention to. I read a few beat reporters talking about this. Uh, they were not concerned about his Thursday availability. And Zeus will play. There you go. Zeus always plays. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Mitch Trubisky is officially named the week one starter. <laughs> Uh, yes. Now, like, uh, I've made illusions in the past that Matt Nagy feels like a, a budget store magician. Illusions or illusions. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. And then it it all finally clicked, and I was able to match up. Like, I finally figured out who Matt Nagy is, and he is Job from <laughs> Arrested <laughs> Development. Yes. Swinging. He's got the knife in his mouth oh. and the cards. just and the $3,000 <laughs> suit on. Come on. I mean, we're here. We are again. Oh, we forget that. I mean, the one thing about Trubisky, because I feel like we beat up on the Bears constantly on sure. this show, whether it's warranted or not, it it does happen. The thing about Trubisky is that you you have seen elite fantasy games out of Mitch Trubisky. It's if he not, runs. It's not like Josh Rosen's experience in the NFL. He has where to it's run. Boring. And often threw- against the Detroit Lions, who he always torches, who he's starting the season against. Yeah. It looked- well, th- I, this was not meant to lead towards someone starting Mitch Trubisky. Yeah. That was not the goal. Correct. DFS but, play. But Trubisky has to run. He And they win games when he runs. So didn't he throw five touchdowns when you yes. when so, you were mean to him? Yes. I had this was several years ago now, and I had this now infamous moment where uh, I boldly declared, and I would say rightfully declared that Mitch Trubisky is not a great quarterback, and he will never ever be a franchise quarterback. And I was right, but then a not few days later, he goes out and throws five touchdowns and murders my soul. <laughs> Malcolm Brown's going to start week one for the Rams. At least that's the expectation. I don't think we'll see Daryl Henderson out there on the field. Um, so at this point, Mike uh, Malcolm Brown could be a sneaky week one start for fantasy teams. Yeah, I completely agree. There, there were some things that have happened. So if you your last positional player, maybe you drafted a, a player you could put on the IR and you're searching around your waiver wire, who should I – be picking up who should I be stashing Malcolm Brown is definitely in the discussion he was I mean, he saw quite a few goal line carries even last year when, when Todd Gurley was there the situation in Jacksonville seems to have mm-hmm. clarified at least a little bit where we didn't know 
I mean, Chris Thompson's locked in. I, I still love him, but we didn't know, is it going to be uh, Reichwell Armstead? Is it going to be Divino Zigbo? Divino Zigbo. Is it going to be James Robinson? And it sounds like it's going to be James Robinson yeah. yep. as of now. So if you have that last spot, he is 100% a player I think you should throw on the back of the bench and just see what opportunities happen week one. It will not shock me in the slightest if a week from today on the waiver show we're saying the biggest pick of the week pickup of the week is James Robinson. Yeah, like, Malcolm Brown in week one last year, two touchdowns. In right. our in our dynasty league that we call on, who has James Robinson? Do you, we it, we do actually, and we grabbed him right off the waiver wire. Well, here here's an important thing for fantasy. You have to both move quickly to to sign a player and, and react to news, but you also have to be willing to quickly take the you know not take the L so to speak, but move on. Like yeah, like when this news happened about Fournette, you had to go out and just grab Raquel Armstead. Everybody had to do it, or and Chris Thompson in the uh, if you hadn't and Divine uh, and Divine potentially. But things have become more clear, so you have to you can't be like oh no I I just spent capital on Ryquell and I can't move like James Robinson's the guy to own right now. Yeah, and to be clear, what happened to Armstead was he is actually he's back on the COVID list. He was on it earlier in the in the off season. Then he had a leg injury. So the the team is not counting on him. You had head coach Doug Marone come out and he said it's gonna be a while before Armstead is ready to play. They, they had him almost not at all through training camp. When they when they decided to release Leonard Fournette Reichwell Armstead was not active, was currently injured, and has missed most of training camp. He he wasn't the reason that they were able to move on from Fournette. Yeah, and uh, Judge Giamatti himself wanted us to remind everybody, if you hadn't joined us when the COVID list was developed mm. by the NFL and the NFLPA, um, just because a player has been put on the COVID list does not mean that they're positive for COVID-19 and have a prolonged time on the list. Oftentimes... It could be – we've seen false positives. It can also be if you were in the circle of somebody else that has COVID and you are quarantining for a period of time because somebody in your vicinity – like we, if you've seen Hard Knocks or you've seen some of the behind-the-scenes of NFL camps this year, every camp has these uh, watched-style uh, proximity alert things that they're wearing. Mm -hmm. And if anybody tests positive in the organization – Everybody that was within six feet of that person gets a notification. I think a lot of these cases are people that were within six feet of somebody that ends up testing positive, part of staff, and then they're being you know they're being careful about it. Um, now, Ryquel might be a completely different story yeah, well, being back on there, but we're not sure yet. But just don't think that you're going to be without a player for weeks on end just because they go on to the COVID nineteen list. Yeah, agreed. And then some other backup situations that have clarified. Let's say you're in deep leagues, dynasty leagues, what have you. The Panthers did release Reggie Bonifon, uh, Super Bonifon. Makes Mike Davis the he looks like the clear backup right now to Christian McCaffrey. And in Kansas City, DeAndre Washington was was starting to build some buzz. The you know the previous connection to Patrick Mahomes, the pass catching ability. They have released him. Daryl Williams is as of as of right now. Daryl Williams is the backup to Clyde edwards alaire He's another name that I would throw on that list of, okay, you, you threw someone onto your IR and you're picking someone up off of waivers. He, he's in consideration to me of someone that just pick up and see what happens week one. Would you rather pick up Malcolm Brown and James Robinson ahead of him, though? Yes. Yes. You James, both would? James Robinson would be my top choice, then Malcolm Brown, and then Williams. Get ready for the Malcolm Brown esque week one for Daryl Williams. Daryl Williams could have could two happen. touchdowns and half the snaps in week one, and we're all going, "Oh wait, I want to see it, Clyde." It could happen, considering they they've already you know said, and this is to be expected that week one, it might not just be one hundred percent the Clyde Edwards Alaire show. Like yeah. you said, Daryl Williams could come in and get a couple rushing touchdowns, but I we already know that's going to happen or could happen. Prepare for that to be a likely event and do not freak out do you if you have drafted Clyde Edwards. Do you remember Malcolm Brown's week one last year? Yes. The, the and Andy certainly does. Yeah. Yes. Two touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> Top 12 fantasy quarterback. <laughs> oh, did you just say that? <laughs> yes. He Unbelievable. Did. <laughs> Second I, time in a row. Well, that's because I was looking, I was like, man, I think there, were, I think he had a dominant week one. <laughs> you so I was looking at the stuff and that's, it's hard to look and listen at the same time. 
Great, ad- great information. I couldn't listen Andy. to your Malcolm Brown take because I was too busy looking up Malcolm Brown. <laughs> Developing my Malcolm Brown take. <laughs> Hype train, Eric Ebron. A lot of talk out of camp with him being used all over the formation. That's one piece of the equation, the hype and the talk and Ebron, Ebron. The other part is that they chose to go with fewer wide receivers on game day because of Eric Ebron's flexibility to be able to use him, line him up outside. It is interesting. It's not like you have a stone-cold locked wide receiver core full of production in Pittsburgh. You have Chase Claypool, a rookie. You have James Washington, up and down. You have Deontay Johnson, first time he's playing with Big Ben. And then you got Juju after the down year. Juju should be pretty safe from a volume perspective. But here's Eric Ebron. Like, I'd rather take a shot at Eric Ebron in week one than I would Jack Doyle Hmm. because I want a chance at 25 points. And I think Ebron is that guy. He he definitely is, especially when you look at the wide receiver core and, you know, Juju's the number one guy. You don't have that locked in, this person dominates in the red zone. As good as Juju is, that's not been where he has been really successful for the team. And it it could be Eric Ebron, just another uh, flashback to his year with the Colts where it was he had like 10 receptions, but all 10 of them are touchdowns. All right. Are there any huge roster cuts that you want to bring up outside the ones you talked about, Mike? I mean, DeAndre Washington was signed by the Chiefs this offseason. He was cut and put back on their practice squad. Um, but we just talked about Darrell Williams. Talked about Theo Riddick was cut. Trey Quinn was cut. Wide receiver for Washington. Uh, maybe that's a little butt tap for Sims in Washington. Yeah. Hakeem Butler was cut for yeah. all the dynasty truthers. That was that didn't work. That out. Failed. But he was also not picked up uh, through waivers. <laughs> so he was also, in addition to that, not re-signed to the practice squad. Uh, and so he's not. So he's, he's not, not really a dynasty hold then. That's yeah. I mean, I yeah. I would I would move on. Do you see the the Packers picked up Robert Foster? Yeah, from Buffalo. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. For the speed, and then shout out to my man Josh McCown, quarterback who's been in the league forever. This dude is forty one years old, and he is now a backup for the Eagles. Except. You know what he has oh, to do? Oh, it's amazing. He gets to sit at home. Yeah. I believe it's in Texas. Yes. So he just hangs out, keeps in shape, and he's making like 12K a week yeah. to hang out. Josh McCown, you're my hero. That is the- <laughs> That is the best job of all time. Cherry on the top of his career. It's so- per- Like he deserves to sit at home with his family and make 12 grand a week just to be your- And he could come in and probably play better than half the backups in football. Yes. Yes, he could. Without- any reps like he's practice squad wait you're practice squad and you don't have to you don't have to practice no you don't josh <laughs> just be a dad you're in your mid 50s or whatever they're just making <laughs> sure like if they need a quarterback which philadelphia has frequently needed a yeah, backup yeah. quarterback they're saying look dibs you can't go to another team and well dibs is 12k a week just for the record <laughs> so amazing that's incredible all right let's do some mailbag Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. All right. Let's go to a voicemail question. By the way, if you have a question, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can also dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We take a lot of questions, especially on the Wednesday shows during the season. So if you've got questions heading into the week, uh, that's a great time to get them in. Let's go to a voicemail. Good morning, footballers. Greetings from New Hampshire. My name is Pedro, and there's a lot of mouths to feed out in Arizona. I'm sure you guys know. So who do you think finishes the year better, Christian Kirk or Larry Fitzgerald? Full point PPR. Thanks, guys. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I I think we all have Kirk projected Mm -hmm. as that number two. He was actually pretty darn good last year. Then he got injured and had a slow, you know, coming back from injury was a little bit difficult, but he is the younger, faster, uh, you know, the he, he's the number two guy to me in Arizona. And I, I believe we saw that he was the number one last year when him and Fitz were both healthy. Yes. Now a year further, well, a year older for Fitz, I, I believe he's the number two. Yeah, that's how we all have him ranked. But I will say this. I mean, last year, Larry Fitzgerald started the year on fire. I mean, he was the go-to target to begin the year. He had the huge plays against Detroit to start the season. And as an older wide receiver, I mean, I've watched probably two hours of Cardinals camp over the last few days. 
Larry is featured frequently. Hopkins is just becoming a part of the offense. Kirk is great, but I would not be shocked in any way, shape, or form if somehow Larry Fitzgerald is the better fantasy wide receiver through three weeks. Are you taking either of them in, in drafts, Andy? I have drafted Kirk uh, with my second to last pick a couple of times. Yeah. And I, I Larry doesn't have any upside. So if if things go right for Christian Kirk, that could mean a lot for fantasy. If things go right for Larry, it could mean what we saw at the beginning of last year where it's like you could start. he's a spot starter. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Um, let's go to another voicemail here. Hey, Ballers. This is Joey Farrell from San Diego calling about a flex question. Uh, should I start the safety of Mark Ingram or the shininess of Jonathan Taylor in week one? Thank you. Yeah, the Colts have Jacksonville in week one, and Baltimore has Cleveland, and neither of those things matter at all because the answer is Mark Ingram. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think that Jonathan Taylor has a situation where you can start him if you need to start him in week one. You don't need to start him. You have Mark Ingram, who you drafted to be a starter. Uh, the offense, they're heavy favorites at home. That's great for a running back. I, Mark Ingram would be my start. Agreed. All right. Tom in Poughkeepsie have to pick up a defense for week one. Would you rather hang on to Alexander Madison in case of a cook injury or hang on to Malcolm Brown and see what he is after week one? What would Ooh, you do in that a, situation? That's a very interesting question. If, if I have Dalvin cook on my roster, I'm just going to eat it and I'm going to have the insurance. I'm going to have bet the backup. I'd rather have Madison if I don't have Dalvin Cook, then I'm going to take the chance on on Malcolm Brown. See if he comes out and he's, you know, 65 percent of the workload for the Rams, which is possible. And then look, look, you if if Ram if if Malcolm Brown hits for the Rams in Week One, you better see if anyone's tilting and ready to trade for Malcolm. I was going to ask that. It's not it's not season long for Malcolm Brown. It could be the first chunk of the season though. I, I would keep Alexander Madison unless. My running backs say I need a guy who can start. It, it, you know, if 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 I went heavy on wide receivers early, and I'm like, man, I could really use someone in in week two, week three that might need to be plugged into my lineup. But if either of these guys are going to be on my bench, feel like I'd rather have Madison for the for the high upside. Yeah, yeah, you could be in that situation if you're like if you picked up David Montgomery in your draft, or you have some right some needs for a spot start to start the year. Then you'd want. Malcolm Brown for yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. Richard in Nashville has a roster construction question. He says, How do you guys feel about having a quarterback and running back from the same team? Specifically Russell Wilson and Chris Carson. I'm not a huge fan of it. I, I it's funny when you said that, when you say specifically, there are specifics that I'm super happy with. And that's the heavy pass catchers. If it's Alvin Kamara and Drew Brees if it's the projected workload for Clyde Edwards-Alaire and, and Pat Mahomes. But if you don't have a running back that projects to be a heavy pass catcher, I don't love having the quarterback running back stack. Yeah, it's not my favorite, but it's if you are confident about Seattle, saying that Seattle's going to score a whole bunch of points, then it's, it's not a complete detriment to your team. All right, another voicemail question. Hey, Ballers, this is Bethany and Detroit. With James Robinson now officially listed as Jacksonville's starting running back, would you drop Zach Moss or Chris Thompson to pick him up? Or would you hang on to these guys for the potential upside? Thanks. Uh, I know my answer, Jason. What do you think? Yeah, I'm definitely hanging on to Chris Thompson and Zach Moss. I yes. I, I think James, you know, he's, he's listed as the starter, but I don't know necessarily that his upside is what either of those other two guys. Yeah, are. you know who's listed as the starter in Washington? JD McKissick. Are is he you, really? Yeah. He's the RB1. Well, he, yeah, he's listed as the starter, but like <laughs> this is and and I'm sure my timeline is going to explode with that. I believe JK Dobbs is like fourth on Baltimore's depth chart and uh yeah. the uh coach Harbaugh was very quick to say we don't make that list like that's this list is being put out by PR teams and so don't worry about uh depth charts completely like that's why the James Roberts thing is take it with a grain of salt like it might be Chris Thompson who is actually the starting running back for Jacksonville I yeah were you disappointed that Carson or Thompson wasn't listed as the first on the depth chart no it, it, it makes sense because of his role in the offense the official depth charts 
right now not are the most meaningless things yeah. that have ever been made. I was listening to Mike Fisher. Um, he's a, a long time 40 year beat reporter for the Cowboys talk about how irrelevant these things are. And he brought up, do you know who the Dallas Cowboys have listed as the tight end one on their depth chart? Oh yeah. The Blake Bell. Nope. No. Uh, Schultz. Nope. Who? Jason Witten. <laughs> That is who they have currently listed as their tight end one. They and, and now to be clear, he does not play for them. That's true. He is a he is a raider. So right. and I just double checked to see if it was still true. It is still true that's, if you go to DallasCowboys.com. You know what they funny. have as their quarterback on the depth chart? Well, Tony, Goldberg. Tony, so, so the here's, goalie. Here's the funny thing. So I didn't realize how crazy Mike McCarthy has been. We talk about Nagy and all his magic tricks. Mike McCarthy, this camp, has been insanely secretive. He won't say anything. He won't. He let, doesn't actually know what's going on. It's, I, I, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> but like, he won't name their punt returner. They won't say who's going to return punts because they want that advantage. And and this is purposeful. He said that there's there's no tape on them yet. There's no film. Wasn't, they don't know what they're going to do. So we want to keep these secrets. Wasn't McCarthy the one that eventually in Green Bay was just getting massages in his office? Allegedly. While other uh, coaches well, took care of things? Oh, I have not heard that. You didn't that, know that? Oh, that's that a was, spicy story. That, no, that came out in the Aaron Rodgers like uh -huh. uh, oh, tale. Interesting. That he kind of got to the point where he had other people doing so many different things that he would just get midday massages and stuff. Sign me up. Well, I mean, look, he's watched every snap of film for the last uh, <laughs> couple of years, except not at all. I was getting a massage. And then and my final stamp back to the, the depth chart conversation. You know who the starter was for the 49ers last year at the running back? It was Tevin Coleman. For the whole year. That did not matter. Probably will be this year, For too. fantasy. Raheem Mostert was the dude. All right. Uh, Richard in Nashville. How do you guys? Oh, I already asked that one. <laughs> I, 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 I meant I meant Brady and Morton. Uh, uh, he said, uh, "Who do you guys think I should start week one as my RB 2 So this is another Jonathan Taylor question, but it's Jonathan Taylor or Marlon Mack. Week, oh, week one. It's a PPR league. Uh, week one for now. You know, just to revisit this in case you weren't with us this off season. Frank Reich, he's come out. He said, both of these guys, we've got a 1A, 1A, whatever language to say they're both the starter. Week one, uh, that's a tough decision because you don't want to be the person that started Marlon Mack and <laughs> miss the Jonathan Taylor breakout. But I believe the right answer is probably, probability-wise, Marlon Mack. Yeah, it's going to be Marlon Mack for me. And here's the nice thing. If you are the guy that missed the Jonathan Taylor week one breakout, and you started Mac over him. You want to know the comfort you're going to have is that you have Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. So you're going to be okay. And I, I would start Marlon Mac week one. I would start Taylor. I'd, I'd go for it. I have uh, been in our League of Record draft, which we have on Wednesday, and we have been doing some mocks and we've been doing some thinking. And yesterday I shared with Jason how unhappy I'm going to be after my first two picks, no matter what I select. And there's a big keeper league, and we have multiple firsts and stuff like that where we're we're thinking about these decisions. But I've found myself, I have actually cooled off on Jonathan Taylor a little bit. I had been rising up. You guys mm. have been bringing me with you. But I've cooled a little bit in the belief that they really will use all three of those backs because they're all really good players. Mm -hmm. It's not like, you know, I don't know how good Justin Jackson really is in Los Angeles. And, you know, beat reporters are talking about... I would say that, that's a great point. Just really Joshua quick. Kelly. Joshua Kelly is in that conversation of you should throw him on the back of yeah, your roster. And I agree. And your they, roster right uh, now. Beat, beat reporters around Los Angeles are saying that they don't expect Austin Eckler's carries to rise very much at all. So there could be about 200 carries on the table for Justin Jackson and Joshua Kelly. Jackson's healthy. He's going to play. But Joshua Kelly is another one of those guys. But like I'm saying, we don't know. Like, I know Marlon Mack. I've watched him play football behind this offensive line. He's, he's really good. He's really, really good. Now, they didn't extend him. So the future is not Marlon Mack. But more, coaches care about the present as much as they do anything else, especially this year. No preseason time for Jonathan Taylor. I've just cooled a little bit. Not saying I wouldn't draft him, but the way my team was looking at the draft, I'd have to take him in a place where I'm starting him within three weeks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know if I want to do that. So there's a little hint into Wednesday, Mike. Maybe I don't, you know, 
Draft Jonathan Taylor. Maybe All right. He's the air for you. All right. David in Washington. Where's a good spot to jump into a draft league last minute? All my friends have bailed. So you are uh, you're in a pickle, David. The season is coming quickly. Yeah, uh, FootClanLeagues.com is a website that we've set up to bring all the Foot Clan members together. You can uh, look for if you if you almost need thirteen thousand of them. Yes, if you've got someone that you know can't go this year and you just need to find one extra Foot Clan member to plug in, that's where you can put your league. If you are the person that's looking to be plugged in, FootClanLeagues.com. We want to thank today's sponsor, Pristine Auction, once again. It's NFL kickoff week. That means they have an auction dedicated to the NFL. All kinds of items. Here's the best part. Bidding starts at $20, no reserves, and it lasts through Thursday this week, through kickoff. A Nick Chubb signed jersey yesterday, $78. So you can find a deal on your favorite player. It is a wonderful thing for your uh, NFL uh, man cave, woman cave, whatever you're watching, football we have them all over the studio, so you can check them out. Use the code BALLERS at pristineauction.com. Get a $10 credit. That'll do it for us today. We've only got one more show day. That is correct. Without football in, on the docket. In fact, tomorrow we will be breaking down Thursday's oh. matchup. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.